China just got blindsided. NASA secretly tested lunar nuclear technology for years while China thought they were ahead. Now America's 100 kilowatt reactor could land by 2030, six years before China's plan. The shocking twist? This creates legal keep-out zones that could lock China out of the moon's prime real estate forever. But wait until you see what NASA's been hiding. Let's dive right in. Here's what China didn't see coming. While they were announcing their Grand Lunar Partnership with Russia in 2024, NASA had already been secretly testing nuclear reactor technology for the moon since 2018. The Kilopower project wasn't just a research experiment. It was a strategic weapon in the new space race. The Krusty Reactor, that's Kilopower Reactor using Sterling technology, successfully demonstrated that highly enriched uranium could generate continuous power in lunar-like conditions. While China was still drawing blueprints, America was already proving their technology worked. But here's where it gets shocking. NASA kept this breakthrough deliberately quiet while China made their public announcements. Why does nuclear power matter so much that it could reshape lunar geopolitics? The answer lies in one brutal fact about the moon that Chinese planners somehow overlooked. While Earth spins once every 24 hours, the moon takes 29.5 Earth days for one complete rotation. Picture this reality. You're China's lunar base commander relying on solar panels. For 14 straight days, you have blazing sunlight and abundant power. Your life support hums, your equipment operates, everything works perfectly. Then comes 14 days of absolute darkness. No power, no heating, no oxygen production. Your entire base goes into hibernation mode while your crew fights for survival. This isn't just inconvenient, it's potentially deadly for any permanent base. China's solar-powered approach means their base would essentially shut down for two weeks every month. Meanwhile, America's nuclear solution runs 24-7, giving them a massive operational advantage. How did China's space program miss this critical flaw in their strategy? When NASA's new administrator revealed their true ambition, a 100-kilowatt nuclear reactor by 2030, Beijing's confidence shattered. To put that power in perspective, that's enough electricity to run an average American home for 3.5 days continuously. But on the moon, where every single watt determines survival, this could power an entire lunar city while China's base sleeps in darkness. China's announced reactor won't come online until 2036, six full years later. In space terms, that's an eternity. Six years of American lunar infrastructure, resource extraction, and territorial positioning while China plays catch up. But the real shock wasn't the timeline. It's what those six years legally allow America to do under international law. Here's the bombshell discovery that has China scrambling their legal teams overnight. The 1967 Outer Space Treaty contains a hidden vulnerability that NASA is about to exploit. While the treaty clearly states no nation can claim lunar territory, Article 9 contains one crucial exception for harmful interference prevention. Nuclear reactors require mandatory safety zones. Radiation management demands exclusionary perimeters. The country operating the reactor isn't just allowed to establish keep-out zones. They're legally required to for international safety standards. Suddenly, America can control prime lunar real estate without technically violating a single international law. China thought they were clever with their joint Russian partnership, pooling resources and technology. They didn't realize they were walking into a legal trap that NASA has been preparing for years. But how extensive could these exclusionary zones become? The answer terrifies Chinese strategists. Location on the moon isn't just about real estate. It's about survival itself. The most valuable lunar territories are the polar regions, where permanently shadowed craters contain billions of tons of water ice, while nearby crater rims receive constant sunlight. These spots are perfect for backup solar power and water extraction, the foundation of any lunar civilization. China's 2036 timeline means America could potentially lock down every strategically important location by the time Chinese astronauts even arrive. The lunar South Pole, the primary target for both nations, has extremely limited suitable landing sites. If America establishes nuclear-powered bases with safety exclusion zones around each installation, China could find themselves completely shut out of the most valuable lunar territory in the solar system. 
But there's something even more sinister in NASA's strategy that China discovered only weeks ago through intelligence reports. Remember when NASA publicly struggled with their original six metric ton mass target for lunar reactors? Those failed attempts weren't failures, they were calculated misdirection. NASA knew exactly what they were doing when they appeared to struggle with mass limitations in public reports that China was carefully monitoring. Here's the devastating twist that changed everything. SpaceX's Starship can deliver over 15 metric tons to the lunar surface. NASA wasn't planning for old generation landers. They were designing for Starship's massive payload capacity all along. While China calculated their reactor specifications based on outdated six-ton constraints, NASA was secretly designing systems three times larger. This means America's reactor could generate far more than the announced 100 kilowatts. Multiple reactor modules delivered across several Starship missions could create a nuclear power grid spanning multiple lunar sites. China's single reactor installation suddenly looks woefully inadequate, like bringing a flashlight to illuminate a stadium. NASA's latest classified revelation shows just how far ahead their planning really extends. American lunar reactors won't just sit exposed on the surface like China's planned installation. They're specifically designed for underground placement in lunar craters or subsurface chambers. This isn't just about radiation shielding. It's about creating permanent, unassailable positions. Underground nuclear installations become nearly impossible to observe, monitor, or interfere with from orbit. China won't even know the full extent of American nuclear capabilities until their astronauts are physically walking on the lunar surface. By then, it might be too late to challenge America's established underground empire. Surface-mounted systems like those in China's current blueprints remain completely visible and vulnerable to observation from space. Underground American reactors could be operating at full capacity for years before China realizes their true scope in power output. The psychological impact is devastating. Here's where NASA's strategy reaches truly advanced levels that caught China completely off guard. Their reactor components aren't just designed for remote operation. They're engineered for fully autonomous robotic assembly. While China plans human-supervised construction starting in 2036, NASA's systems could be self-constructing as early as 2030. Think about the implications. Robotic assembly means continuous construction during those 14-day lunar nights when solar-powered systems completely shut down. America's nuclear-powered robots could be building, expanding, and fortifying lunar positions 24-7, regardless of lighting conditions. China's solar-dependent approach simply cannot compete with that relentless construction pace. The psychological warfare aspect is brilliant. Chinese planners thought they were entering a collaborative lunar development phase. Instead, they're facing the prospect of an American lunar empire that could be fully established and operational before China even breaks ground on their first foundation. Nuclear power doesn't just enable survival on the moon, it enables industrial-scale resource extraction that could reshape Earth's economy. Those 100 kilowatts can power mining equipment, processing facilities, and manufacturing systems that solar installations simply cannot support during the two-week lunar night cycles. Water ice extraction requires continuous operations to prevent refreezing. Oxygen production demands constant power for life support systems. Rare earth mining needs round-the-clock processing to be economically viable. America's nuclear advantage means they could be shipping valuable lunar resources back to Earth while China is still assembling their basic infrastructure. The economic implications are staggering. Whoever controls lunar resource extraction first gains an insurmountable advantage in space commerce. But the most shocking revelation about America's lunar nuclear program remained classified until recently, and it could make China's entire strategy completely obsolete. NASA isn't working alone on this nuclear lunar project, and the scope of American collaboration makes China's government-only approach look amateurish. The partnership includes aerospace giants like Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Aerojet Rocketdyne, but also nuclear specialists like BWXT, Westinghouse, and X-Energy. This isn't just a space project. It's a nuclear industrial complex mobilization. China's joint venture with Russia suddenly appears primitive compared to this American consortium. While China splits resources and decision-making authority with Russia's struggling space program, 
America consolidates the world's best nuclear and aerospace expertise under one unified command structure. The technological synergy between these companies could accelerate development far beyond China's most optimistic projections. Private industry moves faster than government bureaucracy, and NASA has weaponized that advantage. Each company brings decades of specialized expertise that China's centralized approach simply cannot match. Here's what really terrifies Chinese military planners. America's nuclear exclusion zones aren't just about reactor safety. They're about area denial through controlled radiation management. A properly designed nuclear installation can create radiation fields that make approach extremely dangerous without specialized equipment. China would need expensive radiation-hardened equipment just to operate near American nuclear sites. This isn't science fiction. It's nuclear physics reality. American lunar bases could become functionally impregnable without deploying a single weapon, just through carefully managed radiation fields around their operational perimeters. The Outer Space Treaty prohibits weapons in space, but it doesn't prohibit defensive radiation management around legitimate nuclear installations. America found the perfect legal loophole for lunar area control that doesn't technically violate any international agreements. Breaking down the brutal mathematics of this race reveals China's impossible situation. NASA's 2030 target gives them six full years of unopposed lunar nuclear operations before China's 2036 reactor comes online. Six years to establish multiple sites, build extensive infrastructure, and create legal precedents for exclusionary zones that international courts would struggle to reverse. Even if China somehow accelerates their timeline to 2034, that's still four years of American lunar nuclear dominance. Four years to lock down the best sites, establish operational patterns, and create facts on the ground that no treaty or negotiation can easily undo. Every month that passes gives America more time to prepare, while China remains stuck in planning phases. The window for Chinese lunar dominance may have already closed before most people realized there was even a competition. But here's the element that makes America's advantage even more overwhelming. SpaceX's Starship isn't just a rocket. It's a game-changing logistics system that China cannot match. While China relies on traditional rockets with limited payload capacity, Starship can deliver massive nuclear reactor components that were previously impossible to transport. SpaceX's rapid reusability means America could launch multiple reactor supply missions while China is still preparing their single launch. The cost difference is astronomical. SpaceX missions cost a fraction of traditional launches, allowing America to deploy nuclear infrastructure at a scale China simply cannot afford to compete with. This isn't just about technology. It's about fundamental economic advantages that compound over time. America can afford to make mistakes, iterate, and improve because their launch costs are so much lower. China gets one expensive shot and it has to work perfectly. What NASA isn't publicly discussing is how lunar nuclear power enables a complete industrial revolution in space. With 100 plus kilowatts of continuous power, American lunar bases could operate 3D printing facilities, metal processing plants, and manufacturing centers that turn lunar materials into space infrastructure. While China's solar-powered base shuts down every two weeks, American nuclear-powered facilities could be manufacturing components for Mars missions, space stations, and asteroid mining ships. The continuous operation advantage becomes cumulative. Every day of operation while China's base sleeps in darkness is a day of additional manufacturing capability. This industrial capacity could make American lunar bases self-sufficient within years, while China remains dependent on expensive Earth-based supply missions. The strategic implications extend far beyond the moon to control of the entire solar system. Faced with this overwhelming American advantage, China has few remaining options, and none of them are good. They could attempt to accelerate their timeline, but that increases costs and risks while still leaving them years behind America's established positions. They could abandon their solar approach and attempt to develop nuclear technology, but they lack the specialized expertise and partnerships that took America decades to develop. Starting from scratch in nuclear space technology, while America deploys proven systems, is a recipe for disaster. 
Their most likely response is diplomatic, attempting to challenge American exclusion zones through international courts and treaties. But international space law moves slowly, and America will have years to establish facts on the ground before any legal challenges are resolved. This isn't the collaborative space exploration that China envisioned when they announced their lunar partnership with Russia. This is a strategic competition for permanent lunar territory that will determine which nation dominates space commerce for the next century. America's nuclear lunar strategy isn't just about scientific research or exploration. It's about establishing permanent American positions on the moon that China cannot challenge or remove. The nation that controls lunar resources controls the economics of space development. The space race isn't back. It never really ended. It just went underground while America quietly prepared the technological and legal framework for lunar dominance that China is only now beginning to understand. The question isn't whether America will establish lunar nuclear bases, but whether China can find any way to challenge American lunar supremacy once those reactors come online. So there you have it. NASA's nuclear moon plan isn't just about beating China to lunar real estate. It's about fundamentally reshaping who controls humanity's expansion into space. We're witnessing the birth of the first permanent off-world industrial empire, and most people don't even realize it's happening. The implications stretch far beyond national pride or scientific achievement. We're talking about control over resources that could power interplanetary civilization for centuries. The decisions being made right now in boardrooms and government facilities will determine whether space belongs to everyone or becomes the domain of a single nuclear-powered nation. But here's what really keeps me up at night. What happens when other nations figure out what America is really doing? Will this spark a new arms race in space? Could lunar nuclear installations become targets for sabotage or conflict? What do you think? Are we heading toward an American lunar empire? Or will China find a way to challenge this nuclear strategy? Drop your thoughts below. I read every single comment, and honestly, some of you have insights that completely change how I see these developments. If you want to stay ahead of stories like this, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Because trust me, this is just the beginning of a much bigger space power struggle that's about to unfold.